Wolf taking a lot of damage, flashes out, big damage, save, and here comes Marin. He wants Soaz for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but the Slicing Maelstrom buying a lot of time. One for one in this fight, Mithy gets a knockout onto Bang, and look at the damage output! Bang, he's next! Here comes Neil! There's no stopping him now. It's time for SKT to make it to the finals. Hello once again and welcome to another edition of Worlds Tonight coming to you from Brussels Expo for after our first semifinal series and gentlemen let's first of all let's talk about this venue being in I the round it. one I love it good start all right Kobe Kobe got it he I got mean, it being up here in the middle and you know seeing all the, the seats are all empty now but like everyone all around like the full circle plus the teams get to look at each other in the eyes when yep. they're crushing each other that's just the, I'm hoping for some more 500 euro fines as a result of the two <laughs> teams staring at each other. It's yeah. prime, I love the trash talk, it's yeah. prime trash talk or trash gesture territory. I was People about to are say, gonna I'm come up with their own like, oh yeah, take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something that's not, outwardly offensive to other people that. it's like you can't what is that i just did this <laughs> um yeah because i was i was actually going to say a similar thing which is i'm waiting for the stories to come out you know post worlds that what what things occurred as a result of this you know this format or this geography of the stage how the players felt about it too what does it change in terms of nerves actually being able to see the person across from you that you're playing against you know that, that definitely has to change the dynamic of the way you you know feel yeah. when you're on stage. Honestly, you know, all jokes aside, I don't think it's going to change that much. Right. Because uh, you're really absorbed in the game pretty much for the entire duration of the game. You're trying desperately to communicate with the rest of your team. So, you know, looking across and trying to, like, make faces or communicate with the other team mm -hmm. seems like a stretch. No, no, no. What you do is you get the solo kill, right, Cody? Oh, yeah. And then oh, you also, just... Oh, when you're, also, when you're dead, then you have yeah, plenty of time. Yeah, and then the other guy, while he's... The guy who solo killed you, he recalls, and he just, like, leans out. <laughs> and just <laughs> stares you right in the eye. Yeah. That. Let's you know that he's picking up a BF sword while you they, only get a pickaxe. You and ace, come you back ace and the other you team, again. and every person on your team at the same time synchronized. <laughs> no, everybody oh, just no. takes their hands right <laughs> off the keyboards <laughs> while they while they auto push away or something. No, like, okay, the other thing that I will say that this arena is very conducive to is audience waves. We oh, have yeah, very serious because it's actually in the round this time around. You don't have to do that up one row and down the other. We even had two waves chasing each other at the same time uh -huh. at one point. It was a lot of fun in terms of the energy of the arena, also too. So you know you have to do that, the right? What? what so do, jump off your di high horse over there and surf. <laughs> Hi, why, <laughs> why is it a high horse? First of all, because we're up on the <laughs> analyst desk. Using us because you're standing gotta, on a box. Oh, because Monty's there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like it. <laughs> there, there it is. Uh, well, anyway, now moving on to the series at hand, which we saw play out today, uh -huh. you know, relatively went to chalk in terms of a 3 0 for SKT. But you had said in the post game that you were pleasantly surprised by Origin and, and what they had put up one, in though. this series. Yeah, the game one was very good. I don't think the rest of the series went, that went more to my expectation, but I was really impressed that Origin had had it in them to get that dominant early game down because that's something that they were missing the whole tournament so it made me start to get excited that we were going to have a really good series on our hands unfortunately that didn't end up being the result but i think orangin came out really strong yeah i think that's a good point about the early game because that's something that we saw from them in the eu lcs so a lot of their success was do that but then at worlds here it was all about wait late game waiting to scale and stuff so they did show you know some of those old strengths as well and then the decision to go for that baron the decisive double teleport. You know what? We got to get <laughs> something out it. of this. We're doing it. That was a, that was a great moment for them as well. I think the terrifying thing, though, as a result of this series, is seeing the level of composure out of the players on SKT when it comes to being four and a half K down at 30 minutes and being able to pull that back and then, again, come out strong in both games two and three. Well, in a game like League of Legends, where snowballs mean so much and it is easy to escalate an advantage into a winnable situation, that's the hallmark of a good team, right? The ability to play from behind, to wait for your opponents to make a mistake and then take advantage of it. And we saw SK Telecom do that very well. And the key word there is team, because yeah. you can snowball as a team, but we've seen so many times teams here, even at Worlds, 
they make one crucial mistake in the mid game and you lose all of that. But SKT making a mistake maybe looks like someone slightly out of position loses five seconds on the map and has to walk back the other way or something, or they miss one ward, or you know Marn ends up overextending and has to blow his flash. Right, they're few and far between to say the least. If we do look at some individual players on the team, I want to start with Marn. He was our player of the series he's from the today. We said hey, he's, he's the best. He's I've the ever best. Seen. Yeah, Jacoby was also quoted <laughs> saying he's the best top laner. But I mean seriously, an average of player. 91. He's the best player. Okay, he's the, best. he's the average of 91 CS over his lane opponent over the course of three games <laughs> is insane. Yep, it's absolutely crazy. To It didn't manifest so much due to the short duration of the last game, uh, but this is a guy who delivered that nearly 150 CS performance in the first game of this series over Soaz, and that's insane. You know, We call the, the 100 CS threshold the Flame Horizon because that's where Flame used to go back on the, the CJ Blaze days. It's kind of his hallmark move was freezing waves, getting that big CS mm -hmm. edge. And to do it twice in a best of three, I mean, it's hard to do it once. Right. And to do it twice and to do it that consistently is a rare talent. And it and it's strangely the way it affects the other team when all of a sudden you do see yourself, <laughs> you you see yourselves only getting two lanes of A level farm, 18 two, connected two, three, at 25 minutes, like, uh, that does not have a right. good effect <laughs> yeah. on I don't, I don't care what champion we it's, have in that lane against the Renekton. And There's I no, just, I love this guy so much because I like watching him from the very beginning, watching LCK, and you got your guys were talking about him when he first came in, and you're like, oh yeah, he's like the figure of the top lane. He's so good from solo queue. They scouted this guy, and then you know he had he had a lot of work that he had to put in. Yeah. And he's just evolved so much, and he's had all these unique things. Like I always focus so heavily on the home guard early buy thing, but I think it's just so cool and so unique about him how he values this map pressure, and he's evolved into this really great shot caller as well. He just sees the game in an, in an overall view now, which is something that's fairly rare among solo key superstars, you know, and it's taken a while for him to evolve and he's yeah. the best now. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the best. Now the other, the other set of players that I want to look at are Easy Hoon and Faker in the mid lane. We saw them both play today. We saw the team use both of them to success. And we've spoken about, you know, SK team, SKT being an outlier in which they really can utilize both their subs and for very different reasons. We saw the change in pace when Faker came in and how it just kind of threw OG into this tailspin. The classic Faker rise flash into your face. <laughs> just run at over, you. Like on cooldown whenever we're seeing I feel like he's getting lazy. He was, you know, like, is he just getting lazy? He's like, I'm just going to play rise every time and point and click on you until Why? you it away. He comes in when they're up 2-0, game point. Why would he show anything new now? <laughs> he doesn't have to show anything new. And until somebody has an answer for this Rise, yeah. he's not going to play anything else. Like, What's your answer for Rise? What do you I, think I have no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Really? Because I think not, it, not if they're one game away. If, they, if, if they're 2-0, in the finals, you don't think he'll play something else? Okay, like, fair you know enough. What? He probably will. Uh, <laughs> uh, All right, fair enough. Let me get back to that Master Yi pick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Give you a little bit of this. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, like the the whole you know the whole Rise scenario. We talked about that champion in general. Just it's a late game scaling champion <laughs> that spikes early. I think was what pro like, was what probably <laughs> said on the desk. I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, buddy. But I mean, factually, his itemization does take a long time to develop. Mm -hmm. Certainly, he's a threat in a one v one. Uh, but there are ways you can make plays against him. Obviously, he lacks mobility. I was surprised Faker took Ghost in that last game instead of yeah. TP. That, that tells me he's very confident about what he's doing. But when Ryze pushes forward, it, he, you can punish that, right? And he was playing the lane against Peke particularly aggressively. But Origin didn't really bring the jungle and support into mid to help out. Didn't try and create any teleport plays. So... Faker went relatively unpunished despite going nuts in the mid lane in this last game. Yeah, finally to close out thoughts on this series, I want to reflect on Origin's successes, you know, one last time as they were a team, came out of Challenger. Yes, they're a bunch of veteran players, so we can't necessarily <laughs> ignore that, but them as a team together coming through the summer, you know, the summer series or summer uh, split into playoffs, grabbing second, going through the gauntlet, making it two worlds and then finishing top four? I mean, well, I mean, they defied expectations at every turn, right? And especially in their group here at the World Championship where pretty much everybody was like, okay, yeah. KT, LGD, these are the teams getting out. But they put up a hell of a performance. Uh, they played double teleport. It's nice for Origin that the Soaz x a double teleport style just happened to be back at this World Championship, and they made very good shot calling around that. And the scary thing is that this team has so much growth potential. Like, they're, they're so, the arc for this team, like, they've just started still. There are a lot of things they can still clean up in their shot calling because 
having so many experienced players, they've got everybody adding information, and they don't really have, you know, concrete calls before they're, you know, moving to go to an objective, and so they still kind of figure it out as they're moving there. When these guys get down on the same page, and, like, if they establish a pecking order or something like mm -hmm. that, it, this becomes a very scary team. And Niels, and Niels as, with only more time. It's Niels just, I don't as know the rookie on the squad has been like the most valuable player for the team is insane. Yeah, he has been an absolute rock star. Now we know SKT moving on to the finals, which we were finally going to have our first repeat appearance in the finals to see if they can snag a second world championship. They are going to be going up against the winner of tomorrow's series, Fnatic versus Koo. Mm -hmm. Want to turn our attention towards that series because I do think that either of these teams will make for an interesting final against SKT and eclipse Origin in making it a tighter series than today was. Optimistic of you. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Ever, ever the optimist I am. Uh, I think they'll start Faker in the finals, and I think that they'll just use Faker to counterpick. Right. It may be just as one-sided as a result. Yes, but I want to look. I want to look towards tomorrow's matchup in terms of looking at these two teams. I'm <laughs> making a statement about the finals, Monty, but I want to look at tomorrow's semifinals. So, Fnatic yeah, and before Koo. they're on the SKT <laughs> chopping block. Yeah. <laughs> well, they still have. It doesn't matter. Ahead of it them. doesn't matter. They both lose. They both lose. That's the. That's just the the, the fact. No, but it. I like that you're highlighting this because Fnatic versus Koo is going to be super fun. It's going to be really interesting because these are actually, you know, as far as a lot of the other teams talking about their experiences scrimming both of these teams, we've had mixed reviews from, you know, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to some of the Europeans who are scrimming Fnatic, who I feel like maybe Fnatic used a lot, you know, more in their scrims and were willing to show more than they were against, like, uh, Korean teams because they were afraid, oh, Korean teams are going to share or something like that. Um, some people are like, oh, Fnatic's better, but a lot of the Korean teams are like, nah, Koo's much better, so. And the things that you can pull out, Monty touched on it on the analyst desk, the champion picks, that we might see if it's a tight game, if each team starts to take early games in the series. The counter picks, you know, maybe we see things like uh, Lissandra coming out to try and counter some of these melee top laners. We see some wombo combos coming out. It's exciting. It's we really see exciting. Hooney's Heimerdinger come out. I would huh? love to see Heimerdinger. That's not giving anything away, by the way. He played it in <laughs> Korea on stream. Yeah, okay. or, or Gorillas support Vagar, some of these champions. That, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, He's been playing in solo queue. And he's Soraka. A very, yeah, the Soraka, <laughs> one of his favorite champions. So. How have we not? We still haven't seen this Soraka, have No, we? he no. hasn't even that, moused I over it. I don't understand that. I'm, he's supposed to at least hover over it. <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not trolling people in champions, uh, champions like correctly. You know, one final thing, and I'm actually taking us back to the series today. You know what I found out, and there's a whole hubbub about it, in on, the, on the Reddit sphere, yeah, guess what? No, it's no secret. Everybody knows about it. <laughs> Easy Hoon close, guys. played a solo queue game in the middle during that third game of the series. He wasn't <laughs> even watching his team play today. <laughs> Dash, <laughs> relax. No, I, well, yeah, I'm, I, I feel like Easy I mean, Hoon just adopted Monty's mentality of like, we, I already know how this ends. I'm just Baker gonna... slept through a game at MSI because he was tired <laughs> from jet lag. So, I mean, what is Easy Hoon going to do? It's true. Why I not just play a game? But it also shows like the mentality, like a lot of the Korean teams with these experienced coaches, you know, when they get here, we hear people talking about how, oh, they spend a large majority of the time sleeping and then resting for, mm -hmm. for these matches. That's also very important where, you know, a lot of the teams are super nervous. They're trying to practice as much as possible and then they burn themselves out. He's even taking it to another taking level. It easy. He's taking it. They're going to rest for a whole rest. week here. <laughs> well, exactly. They are going to rest for a yeah. whole week because there will be no one to scrim against. I volunteer After tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Let's get together. I'll one v one faker. Let's they'll, go. they'll do Easy Hoon. We'll just pick four random people from EU West and be like, "All right, we're gonna scrim the rest of this." I gotta right stop now. us. We're going down some really extraneous paths here. No, no, it's not extraneous. It well, is important to talk about the fact that whoever wins tomorrow and SK Telecom literally have nobody to play against. All of the teams are on break right you now. You know, Origins like, ah, oh, we're out. Let's go party. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you know, it's one of those. It's one of those situations where. Pretty much, these guys are just going to be solo queuing yep. for the next week. Mm -hmm. Scrims will be few and far between. You're obviously not going to scrim against your finals opponent. So, EU challenger teams. Interesting tactic. It's That's your all time. I have to say. And that makes it hard to make up ground for other teams that are trying to make up ground between them and SKT. Yep. How are you supposed to do that if you don't have good practice? All right. Enough from us here. That does it for the day. Thanks all for joining us for Worlds tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow for our second semifinal matchup between Fnatic and the Koo Tigers. Good night. Relax. <laughs> I'm relaxed. <laughs>
And here we go, game one of the semifinals. South Korea's SK Telecom T1 versus Europe's Origin. Running away through the wards, Hot Summoner teleport. But the Slicing Maelstrom buying a lot of time. One for one in this fight. Mithy gets a knockup onto Bang. And look at the damage output. Undefeated still in the World Championship. Peke, meanwhile, turned into an egg. And the push comes in. Oh! But Amazing is here. The two man knockup trades onto Bang. SKT, one game away from their second World Championship final. He's got aggro, Marin's got the damage. Channel to make sure it's all fine and dandy, even though he's not at the tournament, and a double kill for Marin. Flashing under his own turbo, Faker says, no thank you, I want this kill anyway. Make that three picked up. Oh, the long con 4v5, how about we push mid? How about they pick up Mithy as well? It's time for SKT to make it to the finals undefeated.